Hey, so I haven't uploaded a video in a while, but I have a good excuse. I got a 3D printer, so I've been spending a lot of time messing with that. It's broken a couple times, I fixed it, I've been printing a bunch of random crap. So it's been a lot of fun learning how to use that. But the real reason I've been so busy is because I got a puppy. <laughs> so this is Oakley. She's a golden doodle, if you couldn't tell. Right now, she's about 10 weeks, maybe almost 11. I'll be here sitting at my desk working all day long and she'll just be there sitting on my bed watching me. So now that we got that out of the way, in this video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to code the sliding div game. I already created a video showcasing this game but I didn't really do a tutorial and it's been on my website for you guys to play for a while so if you're interested in learning how the code actually works, this is the video for you. The game's not too complicated when you think about it so I'm just going to break it down here and then we'll get into the tutorial. So you start with a box and you have 25 sliding divs inside of it and a stop button. We're gonna make all of the sliders invisible except for the first one and then when you click the button that first slider stops moving it goes up to the next one and that one starts moving and then when you click that one it basically just repeats every time you click the button it stops that one and moves up to the next one above it but if it doesn't line up with the one below it then it loses a bit of its width basically whatever the overhang is it cuts off and so it goes up like that repeating over and over again so that's enough rambling on, let's just get into the code. So to start off, like usual, we're just going to create a new folder and then create three new files inside of that folder, one HTML, one CSS, one JavaScript. Don't forget to link all your files together or it's not going to work. So now in the body, we're going to create a new div tag and we're going to give it the ID game. And then outside of that div, we're going to create a new button and we're going to give it an onClick. We're not going to set the onClick yet because we're going to run a JavaScript function, but it doesn't exist yet. We'll come back to it. And then we're also going to give it an ID of, I, I make it BTN. It doesn't really matter. Just something so that you can access it later. And then we're going to make the inner text stop. Next, we're going to go in and add some CSS, basically just some basic styling so that we can see everything. Everything has a width and a height. We're going to style the button so that it looks kind of nice and not some basic style button. And then we're also going to style the slider class we actually haven't created that class yet, so what we're going to do is hop over to our JavaScript and add some sliders to our game div. So basically what we're going to do is create a new div element and set it to the variable slider. Add the classes slider and animate and then add the ID slider. And then we're going to append it to the game. But we're also going to put all of that inside of a for loop that counts up to 25 and then changes the ID so that each slider will have an ID starting at 1 going up to 25. So now we have all of our sliders ready and we can see them all. We can also just, I'm going to add a quick border just so you can basically see what's going on and then remove it. In my first draft of this game, I just had it hard coded, but it's 25 lines of HTML and this is only 5 lines of JavaScript, so I feel like it's a little bit quicker. And so you probably noticed that I added the class animate to the sliders, and so we should style that class as well. So in the animate class, we're going to create a new animation. We're going to make it the slide animation for 4 seconds. And so we're running the slide animation, but that doesn't exist yet, so we're going to create that using keyframes. Basically at 0%, it's at the left, and at 100%, it's at the left, and that at 50%, it's at the right. Our game board is 500 pixels wide. It goes over 400 pixels because it is 100 pixels wide, so that makes it go over the entire width. And then we're going to make all of the sliders invisible, except for the first one we'll make visible. So now we can go over to our JavaScript file again and start creating a function called stop sliding. Basically it's going to have a parameter called slider and all that is is the current slider that you are stopping. From the get go only slider number one is going back and forth. So we can go into our HTML and change the on click to run the function stop sliding with the number one because the number one is the one that we want to stop sliding. Later we're going to update that so that it stops in slider 2, but we'll, we'll get to that later. So inside of the function we're going to create a variable called slider current. It's basically the current slider that is moving. Then we're going to have two other variables called slider above and slider below. They are the exact same thing except for the slider with number 1 higher and the slider with the number 1 lower. So now we need to get the left position of the slider that's moving. So we're going to create a variable called left and set it to the left position of that slider at the time where you click the button. So now that we have the left variable set, we can remove the animation, which will make it go back to zero, but then we're going to set the left position to whatever that left variable was, so it puts it back into the position where it was when we click the button. 
Next, we'll get the width of the slider that was currently moving and the left position of the one below it so that we can compare the two. So now we'll create the variable called difference, which is equal to the left position of the slider that's currently moving minus the left position of the slider below it. And we'll also make another variable called ABS difference, which is equal to the absolute value of the difference variable, which if you don't know what that means, it just means it's always positive. So if it's a negative, it makes it positive. If it's a positive, it just stays positive. We also don't want to forget that before we create the difference variable, the left variable is currently a string. So we need to parse it into an integer. And now we're checking if the difference variable is less than zero, so it's a negative number, then we're gonna add the absolute difference to the left variable and then set the left position again. And that's because if we cut off the overhang, but it's on the left side, it's hanging off the left side, then it's just not going to line up. So we need to line it back up, basically. Then we're gonna create a variable called offset. It's basically equal to the overhang of the sliders. Then we're gonna set the current moving sliders width to the offset. We're also gonna set the one above it to the offset as well. We're also gonna make the one above it visible. So now we should be able to click, it stops, and it goes up to the next one. Click, it stops, and it goes up to the next one. But it's a little bit broken, it's not totally working, and that is because at the very beginning of our function, we are trying to set the variable slider below and that won't work if we are starting with slider one because there is no slider zero. So what we need to do is basically create an if statement. If it's the first one, don't create the variable with one less, just create it the same as our first one. So now we'll update the onClick function so that it runs the right function every time we click so that when you click it the first time, it runs it with the parameter one. You click it the second time, it runs with the parameter two. Basically, it takes whatever the parameter was before and it adds one to it so that every single time you click the button, it increases by one. And then this line here basically just actually sets the on click. So now our game's working pretty good, but if you notice, as the slider starts to get smaller and smaller, it doesn't go the full width of the game. So we need to make the animation that it takes a little bit bigger so that it goes a little bit farther and makes it the full width. So what we're going to do is create a CSS variable. So instead of it going across 400 pixels, it's going to go across a variable and then we're going to set that variable to 400 pixels. And then as the blocks get smaller and smaller, we can use JavaScript to edit that variable and make it larger and larger depending on what the offset is. And that's it, we can add this if statement here at the end, which just checks if the block that you are currently stopping completely misses the one below it, then that means the game's over. And so you can present the user score. But that is pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys learned something. I had a lot of fun making this video. I got a bad puppy under my desk who's chewing on my wires. But I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next. Hey! Hey! I'll see you guys in my next video. Mwah.